been cosmetologists, entrepreneurship and knowledge, bringing all of this. Hey, we, we gon' take, take it beyond, beyond the chair. chair. Hey, we, we gon' take it beyond, beyond the chair. chair. From all over the world, so can do the most. Erica Styles. Hello and, and welcome to Beyond the Chair podcast. My name is Erica Chancellor, your host. And today we have a very special guest, Greg Gilmore. And before we talk to Greg Gilmore, I just want to say that um, if you haven't visited our YouTube channel, please go there and subscribe or um, follow our uh, Facebook page along with our Instagram page at Beyond the Chairs. In today's news, we have um, the COVID-19 still just sweeping our area and Things are going on. Some states have opened up. Some states are talking about opening up. And we just really are, this epidemic has just really got us going. So, uh, Greg, Mm -hmm. (laughs) welcome to our Beyond the Chair. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And so what do you think about this COVID-19? It's just sweeping our area. It's got everything, everybody on edge. I know. It's actually very crazy, you know. It's just something that came out of the blue, um, very un, um, unexpected. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think things happen for a reason, you know. And it definitely is here to show us some things. It's here to, you know, either show us to be more disciplined, to help us to have an opportunity to cultivate things that we have been pushing off for a while. Um, as far as my ladies, all my boos and clients and things like that, you know, they got to get familiar with their hair. Yes. You know, get familiar with their own texture. <laughs> and, you know, uh, the absence of that stylist may make you appreciate more the work that we put in. You know, yes. Day in and day That's out. what we need, more appreciation <laughs> right, to the industry. Yeah. Right. So, you know, things slow down for a reason. And I've, you know, noticed that nature is taking a breather. We are really taking a breather. Yeah. And I will say, too, that whenever have you just anticipated being able to take this much time off? Right. You oh, my know, gosh. I'm loving it. I mean... I'm loving this time off because I'm just a go-getter <laughs> and I never stop, so... I know. It's like sometimes, you know, God just got to sit you down. Yeah. You know, you keep going and going, and, I mean, it's crazy, but the time is definitely unprecedented because... You always look forward to your vacation, something like that, maybe two weeks. Yes. You know, I mean, you blessed if you could take a month off of work. Right, right, but right. But just to have the opportunity to have a month, even more than a month off of work, it's honestly, to me, besides the COVID being so serious, has been a blessing to just sit down and take a break, take a breather. Yes, like, I totally agree. Mm-hmm. I totally agree with that. Mm-hmm. So um, our show, of course, is called Beyond the Chairs. And so what Beyond the Chair is, is about is stylists taking their craft beyond the chair. So not just working behind the chair, but knowing that you need more than just behind the chair skills to go beyond. So how have you taken your business beyond the chair? Well, um, business beyond the chair is can be a little intimidating for most stylists just because we are used to the grind. You know, being behind the chair is our meat and potatoes. Yes. You know, so kind of like trying to venture off into anything else. Do you really have time? You right. know, <laughs> because yes, yes. you tend to book so much to get your money. And if you're a good stylist, you're in demand. So you want to please all the people that want to come. Um, however, you know, what I've realized over time through working so much, because <laughs> just like I said, it's a great thing to take this breather. Yes. Um, and, you know, if we hadn't had it, all you have to anticipate is more work, more work, more work. With next year, next year, same thing, work, exactly. work, you know. So um, having so many years of that, I decided to monetize other outlets and things like that where I can not necessarily replace my hair or behind the chair income, but at least add to it so that I could have a little more security, have a little bit more leisure for what I do. Um, in my classes, what I like to do and teach other stylists is that it's very important to uh, you know, get into retail, that kind of thing. Uh, yes. Try to branch off and to see where you can kind of put other things in place because um, over time and after many years, you will start to almost resent it. You know how they say too much of a good thing is bad. <laughs> too much of anything. Right. So you get a little tired. So um, what I've been able to do is, you know, get more into teaching. 
uh, get more into retail. Right. Uh, I've been able to do that through my website, um, through you know utilizing my social media following, um, just really connecting with my clients, connecting with other clients, you know, in different areas, and being able to um, just provide something a little bit more. It also gives me an opportunity to travel, to teach, to you know, talk to other people. So the way I've gone beyond the chair is, you know, uh, increasing my income or adding another stream of income through educating, yes. through training and sharing, and um, through optimizing product and, you know, utilizing that aspect. Yes, definitely. That's that's what we look for as stylists. It's like if our clients have a need, we want to be able to fulfill that need, especially when it comes to something to do with their hair. So it might be just selling them some product or, right. well, especially you know, this time. exactly, exactly. <laughs> and if you hadn't monetized it yet, I'm sure everyone is getting down to it. Right. Um, but if you had, this would be a great time for you because you can still at least get a little bit of that income coming in through your retail and that sort of thing. Yes. I've been able to do some virtual classes, so I've still been able to kind of do something to have something coming in. But also, this is a reminder for people and the st stylists especially to have, you know, that backup savings, to have, you know, yes. things set up for times like this. And I think that's another reason why something like this could have happened because we need that eye opener. Yes. You know, sometimes that... Definitely oh, saving, you know. mm -hmm. uh, filing your taxes. Because if you haven't right. filed your taxes, guess okay. what? You don't get no stimulus. <laughs> right, that so, part. Uh, <laughs> that part. Right, yeah. I filed mine. I filed mine. I didn't do 19 yet. <laughs> I, I did 19. I did 19. So, yeah. Well. So, and, and so just be, being a legitimate stylist, mm -hmm. filing those taxes, mm -hmm. figuring out other ways to make income. Yeah. All well, those things. I think that we have to learn how to be professionals. Yes. Um, and that includes, you know, um, the financial and accounting aspect of our businesses. Yes. Being to, uh, being able to uh, have organization yes. uh, with your business. Uh, and I think all that lends for respect. You yes. know, when we really walk and talk and act as professionals, we tend to get the acknowledgement as, as professionals. professionals. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And, and that's what we talked about on another one of our podcasts, that branding yourself and making yourself more professional is what attracts other clients to you. Very true, very true. Yes. So um, let's see. What inspired you to become a stylist? Um. <laughs> well, you know, I honestly, when I was a little boy, um, I was one of those boys that played with the Bobby Dolls. Uh, okay. You know, I used to like, I, well, I didn't have an infatuation with hair, but I really liked hair. Okay. You know, and I liked seeing um, different hairstyles on people. I thought that it really said something. Okay. Um, I always loved fashion, hair, um, beauty, art. Um, so hair just kind of fell in line with that. Okay. Plus, my... Um, my grandmother would babysit me as, as a child. And so I think really looking back on it because she didn't know where I was going to be at. And she might be like taking a nap in the big chair, you okay. know, in the living yes. room or something. Uh -huh. She would let me just play in her hair. Oh, and okay. And so I would like do little, you know, buns and stuff on her hair and stuff. She had these little clips, you know, them little clips that go yes, in and just stay. Yes, the banana okay, right. <laughs> I used to play and do little stuff like that. And she would wake up and say, oh, that's nice, baby. I love you. And she, you know, that kind of thing. So I always liked working um, in here. I always loved working with my hands. Okay. And my aunt owned the salon. Um, my mom would go there all the time. And so I was with my mom. She couldn't find a babysitter a lot of times. And I would just kind of be in the salon culture. You okay. Know? So I was just very familiar with the culture, um, which is, you know, the camaraderie between stylists. Um, I liked seeing them being creative, talking, right. you know, engaging, laughing. It seemed like it was just a fun occupation. Right, and right, right. And my aunt, she used to have a clear cape, a clear smock. Uh-huh, okay. And so when she would collect all the money, you could just see a whole bunch of water <laughs> coming in her smock. And I'd be like, man, she's making money. You know. Cash money, so, is that? Right, right, right. right. Okay. Plus, so it was, or, uh, the cosmetology program was, put into my high school and I had an opportunity to take the program and so you know my mom and dad scared me to death talking about when you're 18 
you gotta be what able you to take do? it right. <laughs> what you gonna do? <laughs> what you gonna do? I was like, okay. <laughs> so um, I did that out of that too, you know. And so it was a, a occupation that I think where I could be creative. Okay. I could talk to people. I could make a lot of money. Right. Mm-hmm. That sounds good to me. That's, okay. That, that's kind of what attracted me to the right. business. But I also share the story where I had the love for hair as a little kid, too. So I would find myself just always doing my doll's hair. And uh-huh. Yeah, so yeah. same thing it's here. It's fun. It is. It is. I really enjoy it. I, I enjoy the transformation that you give the clients, clients and everything yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what kind of advice would you give an upcoming stylist that's trying to get in the business? Well, um, <laughs> you know... Because I do get that question a lot of times if I teach at a school and stuff like that. And the, and the, the younger cosmetologists, they always wonder, like, what, what can I do to, you know, get ahead? And the thing that I would say really is just to be patient or okay. to have patience. Because most people forget that, you know, you it's going to be a while. You know, before you yeah, build a clientele. Before you build a clientele. Before you get good. <laughs> yes. You know, it too. takes a lot of practice. As yes. they say, what, 10,000 hours to really master something. Wow. So, you know, think you got to put your 10,000 in. Right, You know, right, if right. you don't be where you want to be that you idolize or see someone else at, you know. And so I just tell them, just equip yourself with patience, uh, fortitude, and discipline. Okay. Um, and people ask me, how do you build a clientele? They always ask me that, too. <laughs> yeah, consistency. Yeah. You know, even when I first, because I had to build a clientele twice. So you have to have a lot of strength um, mentally uh, just uh, and emotionally because there's going to be a lot of times where you might have hard times or you might not feel as good mm-hmm. or, you know, looking at other people's work is discouraging because you don't think that yours is up to par. Mm-hmm. And so you have to do a lot of self-motivating, a lot of coaching of yourself and staying true to the game. Anything um, that's worth having is worth really working towards. Yes. Yeah. And um, it just takes time. So I tell people just to be patient, equip yourself with um, self-discipline, consistency, because um, like I said, I built two. So um, the first time was in Cleveland, because I'm right. originally from Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. So I moved down to Los Angeles about about 10 years ago. It's like, this is my 10th year. It'll okay. be 10 years in October. Um, but even the first time when I first got out of high school, I had to build. I was right. lucky then, because I still was at home. And right. I could take my no time. Bills. And, it was right, outstanding. And have a lot of bills. <laughs> Only bill, and I was stressed about my one or two bills, which is my cell phone. Right. <laughs> and my car, no. I yes. had a little buy here, pay here situation every two weeks. So I would be shampooing, you know. But you never know how things are set up to really prepare you for what's next. Right. And so that hustle that I had just to pay my cell phone, just to pay my little car note, really equipped me with the hustle I needed for bigger bills and to be a real adult, you know? Right. And so during that time, the consistency of just being in the salon, I'm old school. So in the old school days, we was just taught to be in the salon. Yes. You don't come to go. You come to stay. Yes. And so I would just be at the salon. Put in your eight hours. You got to put in that work, that time, you know? Yes. So I would sit with other um, stylists. I would watch them. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's not said enough, but it's really satisfying to watch someone do hair. It is. You know, to watch someone flat iron hair, to do those styles that, finished that they result. do. Yes, yes. Cut hair. Yes. Like, that was really inspiring to me to see great hair cutters just cutting their hair and just yes. carving out these shapes. So, um, watching, um, uh, and then every client that I got, they were like my number one. Right, you know? okay. So I would give them everything, like, hey, you want water? How you right. feeling? How you like this? Left side, right side? Right. How you wear your part? You know, just right. very just always, to them, yes, you know? Yes, yes, yes. And so they never would see if I was struggling or if I was having a hard day or mm-hmm. if I was having a hard time. Mm-hmm. Anytime the client came in, it was just very like, hey, how All you doing? about them. All about them. Yes. Very, like, secure and... Um, because that gives them confidence to be able to come to you. Yes. You know, and so over time through doing that repeatedly, my clientele just grew and I just had a clientele. Right. So, uh, oh, and that happened both times in LA and Cleveland. So one that I will say too, an uh, old veteran stylist told me when I was coming up okay. was that, and I always remember and I tell it to other people, is that you have, when you first get out, 
Um, it takes two years to have a good clientele, but <laughs> it takes five to have a great clientele. Oh, okay. You know, so okay. that's very true. Any stylists I've asked, you know, they know that grind. You yes, know? definitely. So, I can relate. <laughs> right. So sure. when you get out of high school, just be practicing. Or not out of high school, but out of cosmetology school, you need to just practice. And those are the times when you can try all the stuff that you want to try, mess yes. up on somebody's head. You exactly, because you get thing. your past then. It's, it's when you making that big money and somebody pay you that big money and you mess up their head. Okay. That's when it's going to be a problem. That's when it's going to be a problem. <laughs> right. Or you get that opportunity and you say yes, but you know it really should be no. Exactly. You know, you just try to run in there and do it anyways. <laughs> but you got to just... Um, you know, just keep practicing, keep doing what you're doing, you know, and it'll eventually come. It's like, you know, you can't, uh, and same thing for, like, ladies that want to see their hair length, you know, yes, when they're trying to grow definitely. their hair out. That's you got to wait, one. you got to be patient. Ain't no other way around it. If you look at a flower all day, you know, waiting for it to grow, you ain't going to see the growth. <laughs> exactly. It's just up in one day, and there it's grown. Right, you know? exactly. That's really how it is. Definitely. Well, it's been good talking to you. Good talking to you, too. One last question about licensing, because that's been a big thing with our industry is us right. being deregulated. Yeah, yeah. Do you mm -hmm. think that that's important for us to have licenses? I think it's very important for us to have licenses. The one thing about having a license is that it has so much focus on sanitation and, you know, proper procedure when, you know, protecting other people because you work with the public. Exactly. Now, it's just very human important. to human contact. Right. I think you need a license. Right. Because <laughs> the license primarily is dealing with that aspect. Yes. Sanitation. Client you know, protection. That kind of thing. Disinfecting. And Honestly, COVID came through, probably gonna shut down that deregulation. Exactly. Because you need to be certified. <laughs> you need sanitation. to be certified. You know, know how to not pass this COVID on to people. Okay, <laughs> that part. So I think it's very important. Also, I think that it lends for our industry and our field to have respect. Yes. To have the respect that professionalism. It deserves. Yes, as um, a professional occupation, because what we do is very important work. I think it also can be considered essential work because um, it has a, a lot of contributing factors to a person's confidence, a yeah. person's self-esteem. A lot of people identify who they are and how they, uh, the persona they'd like to project through their hair. Yeah. You yes. know, the colors they choose to wear, the cuts they choose to wear. Yes. And so I think as a professional, you know, that's something I take serious. And, you know, it's not something just anybody can do. Right. You know, it's I a agree. lot of stuff down to it. And that's what separates, you know, the professionalism. The, from the novice. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, definitely. So if you want to give your um, Instagram information out and okay. tell them how to reach you if they want to talk to you. Or... Cool, cool. Well, I'm Greg Gilmore, once again. And um, my Instagram is at Greg underscore Gilmore. And that's G-I-L-M-O-R-E. And I have a website. You can check out more of my work and other things that I do at greggilmorehair.com. I also write a bi-weekly newsletter, which comes out on the website. And I post it on my Instagram and that kind of thing. And it's just very motivational. Uh, I have lots of topics of uh, things that will help you to improve your life or, you know, exercise regimen. This last newsletter I did had a lot to do with what to do while quarantined and you know, recipes you can cook and different ways that you can exercise and stay tight while you're quarantined. So it's a very informative um, newsletter. And um, that's it. You know, I'm on Facebook as well. All right. Well, thank you to our Beyond the Chair audience and see you next time. Cal do the most. Erica Styles and Jay Dows be the host. Hey, hey, professionals everywhere. This is next level. Beyond the Chair.